Today, I'm swapping out a compressor on a central air conditioning unit. I had originally diagnosed this compressor bad because it was no longer pumping refrigerant. I am still gonna do an acid test just to be on the safe side. This test is instant and it came back negative for acid. While I'm recovering the refrigerant, I can start the process of prepping the old compressor for removal. Remove the power from the condensing unit. Remove the four screws that hold in the outdoor condensing unit fan motor. Remove the control panel to access the controls and wiring. Cut all the zip ties holding together the wiring as I'll be removing the fan motor from the condensing unit completely. My recovery is now done, but I only pulled out three pounds from this unit, which is the factory charge, which would be fine if there wasn't an additional 50 feet of line set. This low charge is probably one of the main contributing factors to taking out the compressor in the first place. No sweat at all, because I'm gonna cut out this old compressor. I know a lot of people that sweat them out, and I used to do that too. I just feel like this is a cleaner option. With the tubing cut, I can now slide out the crankcase heater, and with my handy compressor tote, I can easily remove the compressor from the condenser. Not a lot of people know about this handy tool, so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to get your hands on one. Definitely makes compressor swap outs much easier. Slide the crankcase heater back over the compressor before joining the copper tubing. And I also like to get these bolts hand tight before brazing. Remove the compressor plugs, then you can insert your piping into the compressor. You want to make sure that it's very snug and tight. You don't want it slipping out in the middle of brazing. Before I start brazing though, I need to remove the valve core from the liquid line and the suction line. Hook up the nitrogen regulator that also has a braze setting. Then purge a generous amount of nitrogen through the line set before I back it down to the brace setting. I'm also keeping that liquid line open so the nitrogen has somewhere to flow. Next step is to remove and replace the old liquid line dryer. I will definitely be cutting this one out because if you sweat the old dryer out, you can potentially release any trapped moisture that was in that dryer, which will just make the evacuation process longer and it can also get trapped in that new compressor oil, which is no good. Now I'm gonna do a nitrogen pressure test up to about 150 PSI, then hit up all of my joints that I brazed with soap bubbles and look to see if I can find any micro leaks or listen for any hissing. If there's no pressure change in about 10, 15 minutes, I'm gonna release all of the nitrogen back to its home into the atmosphere. For evacuation, I'll be using the VP67 field piece vacuum pump with two 3 8 vacuum rated hoses that I only use for vacuums. Both valve cores are already removed and I will keep those valve cores removed to speed up the evacuation process. I will be using three valve core removal tools made by Apion. They are vacuum rated. The reason I use three is so I can add an additional one for the micron gauge so when it comes time to break vacuum I can easily isolate the gauge from the refrigerant. I've got my valve core removal tools in the closed position. I want to start this pump with the gas ballast open. Once it runs for a little bit, then I'm going to open up on all of my valve core removal tools. Then monitor the micron gauge. Once the micron gauge gets around 3,000 microns, I'll then go ahead and close down on the gas ballast. While the system is evacuating, I can continue to put everything back together. 
And you know with the new compressor replacement, I'm gonna also be replacing the contactor with the new one, as well as the run capacitor. We are now down to 300 microns. I'm going to do a decay test as a next step. Valve off all of my valve cores to isolate the system from the vacuum pump. And what I'm gonna do now is look for any significant rise in the microns. It should not go above 1,000 microns over the period of 10 minutes. If it stays below 1,000 microns, this indicates a moisture and leak-free system. The decay test also gives you a more realistic micron reading. With the rise of barely 100 microns after 10 minutes of being isolated, I can now break the vacuum with refrigerant, being extra careful to purge any air that may be trapped inside of my manifold gauge hoses. And I am also using virgin refrigerant. I will be weighing in the charge to the exact amount that I took out. And from there, I can dial in my subcooling as this is a TXV system. You can see here, I've got it a little over three pounds right at the factory charge as stated on the nameplate. But I also know I have about 50 foot of line set I've got to accommodate for. I will also be installing brand new valve cores. With the valve cores installed, I can hook up my job link field piece probes. And on the suction side, you can see that I have the charging adapter hooked up to that probe. The spots where I'll be putting the temperature clamp, I want sanded down. I want those nice and clean. And I also don't want direct sunlight hitting the spots where I'll be putting the clamp as that can skew the temperature readings. I've now got the system running, but I want to leave this system running for at least 15 minutes before I start making any adjustments with the refrigerant charge. And after 15 minutes of running, you can see I have a very high superheat with a very low subcool, which is a telltale indication of a low charge. So now I can begin to slowly add refrigerant into the system so that I can drop that superheat and raise that subcool. And these are my final readings that I'm pretty happy with. After adding about two pounds of refrigerant to the system, 13 superheat, 11 subcool, four and a half amps, and this fix is done. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one.